Hi, I'm Mike with the School of Self-Reliance, and today we're going to talk about three things that you should never skimp on. And there are three things that will make you hate life more than anything that you've ever thought of. First one is boots. If you're out in the field and you're walking around all day carrying a heavy pack, if you have a set of bad, uncomfortable boots, nothing will break you down faster. And it's a, it's a cumulative process with the things we're going to talk about today. The boots and other things that we're going to talk about, they break you down little by little. And they stop you from ever recovering. So that they just take you completely down and out of the fight. <clears throat> and a lot of them are things that people wouldn't normally think of. But your foot gear is very, very important. I mean, you go nowhere, okay, in a patrolling situation or, or any of that, that you're not taken there by your Cadillacs. And these are your Cadillacs. This is what gets you there. Your feet and the boots you put on them. So if you're in a survival situation or you're in a all-hell-breaks-loose scenario, end-of-the-world kind of prepper thing, uh, your foot gear, you're going to be walking a lot. And all you have to do to prove what I'm saying is go out in the woods for three days. Two would work. Walk around, patrol around, scout around, do your normal activities in a set of uncomfortable boots. Boots that uh, don't fit your feet right, that aren't comfortable, and see how much trouble they really give you. First your feet hurt, then your knees hurt, then your back starts to hurt, and it's only going to get worse day after day. So a bad set of boots will break you down. Now, these are made by the Cove Boot Company. They're Matterhorn, uh, Matterhorn boots. They're a 10-inch boot. I wear these all the time. I've had these for years. As you can see, they are well-worn. Um, but I like these, and these have a stitched-on sole. I also own some Danner boots, Fort Lewis boots and Acadia boots. Uh, and I love them to death. Uh, but they're well-made boots. This stitching, what it allows, this stitching, because the sole is stitched onto the boot, is when you wear the sole out, these can be resold. They can have a new sole put on them. So you've broken in the boot upper, but you can get a new sole put on them. So it will extend the life of the boot. You won't have to break in a new set of boots. And most of the time, once you've worn the sole flat or taken the tread off of it uh, or torn it up, most of the time the upper of the boot is still fine. It can still be worn for years and years to come. These boots right here, this particular set, uh, they're about seven or eight years old and I've been using them quite a lot. Uh, and I've had several of these pairs of boots that have seen two or three soles. And my Danners are no different. But these are 600 grain thinsulate. They make them uh, in uninsulated 200 and 600 grain thinsulate boots. Now, they're padded at the collar, so they're very comfortable there. They have some good padding down inside. They're Gore-Tex. Okay, They have a Gore-Tex booty in them uh, so that they're completely waterproof. And for winter time, these are a great boot. And you really do need two sets of boots. You need a winter boot and you need a summer boot. Because trust me, this boot will break you down in the summertime because your feet are going to turn into bubbling cauldrons. It's going to be like uh, smoked sausage being cooked in a crock pot down there. So you could never wear these in the summer. But you're going to need something like that for the winter. The standard U.S. military Mickey Mouse boot, which works on air bladder systems, it's rubber, uh, and there are air bladders throughout the boot. The boot actually works by just forming dead air chambers. These are actually really good boots, and they're actually not uncomfortable. They're quite comfortable. And they will save your feet in the wintertime. So, a set of boots like these Matterhorns are about 250 My Fort Lewis boots are... Well, they're near $400. If you can't afford a pair like that, you're only going to be operating in a wilderness environment. You're not going to be doing a lot of uh, urban stuff where you're going to be around nails and broken glass and things like that. These boots would probably take some of that, but not, not nearly what these would. Uh, then this is a good economic alternative. And if you're going to get into some really, really uh, 
you know, Arctic type temperatures, you know, 20 below zero or more than that, or even 10 below zero, uh, these boots will save your feet. And you can get them for around $69, $79. They are comfortable. They will work. They will keep your feet very, very well in cold climates. Uh, and uh, like I said, they're cost effective. And I use both. I use both these types of boots and these in the wintertime. Now, in the summer, well, let's continue with uh, fall or things like that. This, uh, this pair is waterproof and insulated, and they're made by the original SWAT company. Uh, to me, these and Magnum Boots and a few other companies are kind of a uh, middle-of-the-road uh, price-wise boot that you can wear multi-season. And I have summer boots by Original SWAT. If you notice, they have vents in them. That way, uh, you know, they can breathe. But they're all very well padded, a padded tongue, padded collar. And right down here at this part of the foot, a lot of boots will have uh, the material meeting each other, but it will be cut off about right here uh, on the bottom part of the boot. And it'll ride and cut into the top of your foot. So you want to check for that while you're in the store. And if you feel a band of pressure, like a sharp edge right here in front, that's only going to get worse. If you felt it in the store, it's only going to get worse. So if you feel it when you put the boot on, take it off, put it back. It's not going to get any better. It's not going to break in and go away. It's only going to get worse and worse and worse as time goes on. So don't buy that boot. There's a lot of good boots out there. Danner uh, and tons of other companies. Now, I like the Cove Boot Company and I like Danner because they've got old and just strong reputations in, in manufacturing boots. But I buy a lot of these original SWATs because they feel like a tennis shoe. And in, uh, in warm weather, well, would you rather be in a real heavy pair of boots or nice light ones that protect your foot and that are very comfortable and feel like a tennis shoe? You know, this one's a waterproof boot, uh, so I can wear it multi-season, but this is not a full-on winter boot. It's not something that you're going to get out there and stay in the snow banks and things like that with. It's just not going to happen. Your feet are going to get cold. And if your feet are cold or if they're wet uh, or if they're burning hot, this is part of what starts to break you down, okay? Uh, and it's, it's only going to get worse. It's not going to get better. You know, you go to sleep at night, you need recovery time, and if, you're, if your feet are in bad shape the first day, uh, you're going to have to go right back into those boots the next day. Uh, a lot of times, if you've had a real bad day with your feet, I suggest sleeping with your boots on, because you might take your, your boots off, and your feet may swell up, and you may never get those boots back on again, at least not that day. So, uh, you know, think about your footwear. Good, cushioned soles, comfortable. Uh, you know, the tread is a big, uh, big consideration with the boot. Something that has a positive grip that actually works. Uh, because, believe me, the Army issued some speed lace boots uh, many years ago. Some black leather speed lace that kind of looked like a truck tire tread. Uh, you know, the old Jeeps from World War II. And that was probably the most useless tread pattern I had ever seen in my life. And I slipped and broke my, uh, well, I slipped and, and fell more than once with, uh, with those boots on. And so the tread pattern, making sure that it is a good tread pattern. Uh, you also want soles that are puncture resistant. Something that, uh, like these, uh, these Matterhorns and the Danners, they actually have a, a, a layer that runs through the sole that is puncture resistant. Uh, to help keep you from uh, uh, getting nails or sharp sticks or other things punctured through the bottom of your uh, boot and up into your foot. Uh, the original SWATs do too. Uh, they're puncture resistant. But you want a comfortable set of boots that are well made. Uh, the SWATs, I look at it this way. I've had them for a few years. I like them. I used to sell a lot of them. They're very comfortable. I do consider them a disposable boot. Uh, they're a boot I'm going to wear for a couple of years and I'm going to throw them away. Uh, you know, they will break down. These over here are many year products. So gauge that when you're, when you're putting together your kit. Now we're going to come right back. We're going to tell you about the second thing that you never want to skimp on out of the three.
The second thing you should never skimp on when you're buying your kit is your backpack. <coughs> Alice packs are great packs. This is not one. This is a U.S. Marine Corps ILBE backpack uh, made, made by Arcteryx. And they're a regular backpacking company. Uh, people who uh, supply people for adventure racing and backpacking adventures. So they've got a lot of consideration into comfort. Uh, the old Alice packs, uh, though good, uh, were not the most comfortable thing to carry all the time. And pre-Alice pack was even worse. And there's still some bags out there that look like backpacks, okay? But they're really, a, they're an imposter. They're a bag with some straps on it. Uh, they look like they'd be very comfortable, but they're not necessarily. This one, everything is adjustable. Everything is padded. This belt is adjustable for size. It has a pad back here for your lower lumbar. It has padding up to the back all the way to the top. And this is going to help with, uh, with all kinds of things that are inside the backpack. It also has a plastic sheet that runs from top to bottom. And that's if you put sharp or pokey things or cornered things in your backpack that they're not poking into you and you're feeling them all the time. Put your backpacks on when you get them. You want to check for the padding. You want to make sure that everything's padded and adjustable so that you can fit it to your body. And one of the biggest reasons for this is if that pack rides uncomfortably on you when you're walking around, it's going to start wearing on you. It's going to be a constant discomfort that's going to last all day. And it's going to be just like the boots. Little by little, it's going to break you down, and it's going to hurt. And then the next day, you've got to get up and get right back into that backpack and do it again. And it's going to be cumulative. Day by day, it's going to break you down. So you want something that's comfortable, that's not going to cut into your shoulders, that's going to ride in the right place on your hips. And you want to really go through this and check out your backpacks when you buy them. Now, if it's a little patrol pack that's only going to hold 10 or 15, 20 pounds in it at most, uh, most of these considerations are less important because you're not carrying much weight and you're not carrying it very far. Okay, So a little less padding and a little bit less adjustability is not necessarily the end of the world. But if you're talking about an expedition pack or something that you're going to bug out with, then it becomes extremely important. Uh, another thing people have asked me, and this is a side note, people have asked me where I prefer to mount my sleeping bag on it. Uh, I don't like mounting it on top because when I turn around, it interferes with my vision. I can't see behind me, and it cuts off some of my peripheral vision when I start to do this. So I don't like that. I would always rather mount it on the bottom or have it ride inside the pack. That's just a side note for people who have been curious and asking. But really go through your backpack. Make a good choice in your expedition bag. Uh, and wear it before you buy it. You know, really look at it. Do your research. Make sure it is fully adjustable everywhere. Make sure it is fully padded. Look at the considerations, like that plastic plate that they put in here to keep things from poking you. Have they made considerations for the load that you're going to carry? And is it load adjustable so that you can ride the load slightly higher on your back or drop it depending on your comfort level? But the backpack is one thing you never want to skimp on. It will break you down, and it will break you down quick. And God forbid you have a bad set of boots and a bad backpack at the same time. It's going to break you down and tear you down that much faster. The last thing on our list of three things that you don't ever want to skimp on is your sleeping bag. And I want you to go back, if you would, and reference our older video on sleeping bags. But you don't want to skimp on your sleeping bag. This is a uh, military three-layer sleep system, or actually they call it a four-piece sleep system, but I have the three layers here. And they are, in my opinion, one of the better values. Of course, like I said, go back, reference our video. But light, lightweight, able to be packed down, able to be stored more easily, and one of the big considerations, of course, is keeping you warm. Hold on just a second. Okay, you might notice this bag's a little dirty. It's actually been out on a survival class with me recently. 
uh, where we took all of our gear. So forgive the leaves and the dirt. But you should never skimp on your sleeping bag. Under any circumstances, don't skimp on your sleeping bag. Because if you don't get a good night's sleep, you are not going to be well in the morning. If you spend the whole night freezing, if you spend the whole night uncomfortable, you are not going to be well come morning. And if you had a pair of bad boots or a bad backpack, then you're in a lot of trouble. Anyway, you have to be able to get a good night's sleep. That means that you have to be comfortable and you have to be warm. And a cheap sleeping bag is going to lead to a bad night. It's going to make you cold. It's going to make you uncomfortable. There's not enough padding there for you to be padded. Uh, you're not going to be warm or insulated. You're not going to be dry. You know, I like the military sleep system because of the Gore-Tex bivy cover. This makes guarantees that it's waterproof, that I'm going to be dry. The weight of it, I find acceptable. Now, Kafaru makes some really nice sleeping bags that are, that are just fabulous as far as weight. I would always, always want to add to a Kafaru or a Snug Pack bag. I would always want to add a military bivy cover, uh, one of the Gore-Tex bivy covers if it doesn't have one, so that you can guarantee waterproof. Also, it adds 10 degrees to your comfort rating on the sleeping bag. So if it was uh, zero degrees, it's now minus 10 just by adding this Gore-Tex bivy cover. So the idea is if you've got bad boots, a bad backpack, and a bad sleeping bag, you are in hell. You are going to suffer all day. When you get in your bag at night, you're not going to be comfortable, so you're not going to sleep much. And that means no recovery time. That means whatever injuries or damage you've done to your body during the day, you're not going to recover. You're still going to be tired when you wake up. You're going to be sore when you wake up. Nothing's going to get any better. You know, one of the other things you want to think about with the bag, you don't want frostbite. You don't want to, you don't want to be, become hypothermic. Uh, and that's what your sleeping bag is going to save you from. But also, when the weather is not that bad, your sleeping bag, when it is just cold enough to be truly miserable, uh, but not get hypothermia because your bag is just warm enough to keep you from that, but uh, make you uncomfortable still, those are the things that you're trying to avoid. Also, you don't want a bag that's going to tear up on you. And so don't skimp on your bag, don't skimp on your boots, and don't skimp on your backpack. You will suffer every step of the way. Even if you've got good boots and a good backpack and a, and a crap sleeping bag, you go through the day and you get tired, you go to sleep at night, you don't get much sleep in a crappy sleeping bag, you're uncomfortable so you don't sleep well, then you get up in the morning, you're not rested, you're not repaired, you go make yourself even more tired. Okay, Even if your backpack and boots aren't breaking you down, your bag will break you down little by little, night after night until at the end of a couple of days you feel like you haven't slept in weeks. And that's going to just physically drain your body down to nothing. And God forbid you have all three of them at work at the same time because it's just going to kill you and it's going to do it quick. Uh, so think these things through when you're getting your gear. And remember, don't skimp on your bag, don't uh, your sleeping bag, don't skimp on your backpack, and don't skimp on your boots. There's some other things you shouldn't skimp on too, but uh, these, are, these are three main things that will just break you down, and they're the kind of things most people don't think of. But again, I'm Mike from the School of Self-Reliance. If you like what we do, watch our videos, share our videos, like us on Facebook, and thanks for watching. You really do need two sets of boots. You need a winter boot, and you need a summer boot. Because trust me, this boot will break you down in the summertime because your feet are going to turn into bubbling cauldrons. It's going to be like uh, smoked sausage being cooked in a crock pot down there. So you could never wear these in the summer. But you're going to need something like that for the winter. The standard U.S. military Mickey Mouse boot, which works on air bladder systems, it's rubber, uh, and there are air bladders throughout the boot. The boot actually works by just forming dead air chambers. These are actually really good boots. They're actually not uncomfortable. They're quite comfortable. And they will save your feet in the wintertime. So a set of boots like these Matterhorns are about $250. My Fort Lewis boots are, well, they're near $400. If you can't afford a pair like that, you're only going to be operating in a wilderness environment. You're not going to be doing a lot of 
uh, urban stuff where you're going to be around nails and broken glass and things like that, these boots would probably take some of that, but not, not nearly what these would. Uh, then this is a good economic alternative. And if you're going to get into some really, really, uh, you know, Arctic-type temperatures, you know, 20 below zero or more than that, or even 10 below zero, uh, these boots will save your feet. And you can get them for around $69, $79. They are comfortable. They will work. They will keep your feet very, very well in cold climates. Uh, and, uh, like I said, they're cost-effective. And I use both. I use both these types of boots and these in the wintertime. Now, in the summer, well, let's continue with uh, fall or things like that. This, uh, this pair is waterproof and insulated, and they're made by the original SWAT company. Uh, to me, these and Magnum Boots and a few other companies are kind of a uh, middle-of-the-road uh, price-wise boot that you can wear multi-season. And I have summer boots by Original SWAT. If you notice, they have vents in them. That way, uh, you know, they can breathe. But they're all very well padded, a padded tongue, padded collar. And right down here at this part of the foot, a lot of boots will have... Uh, the material meeting each other, but it will be cut off about right here uh, on the bottom part of the boot. And it'll ride and cut into the top of your ear is very, very important. I mean, you go nowhere, okay, in a patrolling situation or, or any of that, that you're not taken there by your Cadillacs. And these are your Cadillacs. This is what gets you there. Your feet. And the boots you put on them. So if you're in a survival situation or you're in a all hell breaks loose scenario, end of the world kind of prepper thing, uh, your foot gear, you're going to be walking a lot. And all you have to do to prove what I'm saying is go out in the woods for three days. Two would work. Walk around, patrol around, scout around, do your normal activities in a set of uncomfortable boots, boots that uh, don't fit your feet right, that aren't comfortable, and see how much trouble they really give you. First your feet hurt, then your knees hurt, then your back starts to hurt, and it's only going to get worse day after day. So a bad set of boots will break you down. Now, these are made by the Cove Boot Company. They're Matterhorn, uh, Matterhorn boots. They're a 10-inch boot. I wear these all the time. I've had these for years. As you can see, they are well-worn. Um, but I like these, and these have a stitched-on sole. with the School of Self-Reliance and today we're going to talk about three things that you should never skimp on and there are three things that will make you hate life more than anything that you've ever thought of. First one is boots. If you're out in the field and you're walking around all day carrying a heavy pack, if you have a set of bad uncomfortable boots nothing will break you down faster and it's a it's a cumulative process with the things we're going to talk about today the boots and other things that we're going to talk about they break you down little by little and they stop you from ever recovering so that they just take you completely down and out of the fight <clears throat> and a lot of them are things that people wouldn't normally think of but your foot I also own some Danner boots, Fort Lewis boots and Acadia boots, uh, and I love them to death. Uh, but they're well-made boots. This stitching, what it allows, this stitching, because the sole is stitched onto the boot, is when you wear the sole out, these can be resold. They can have a new sole put on them. So you've broken in the boot upper 
but you can get a new sole put on them. So it will extend the life of the boot. You won't have to break in a new set of boots. And most of the time, once you've worn the sole flat or taken the tread off of it uh, or torn it up, most of the time the upper of the boot is still fine. It can still be worn for years and years to come. These boots right here, this particular set, uh, they're about seven or eight years old, and I've been using them quite a lot. Uh, and I've had several of these pairs of boots that have seen two or three soles. And my danners are no different. But these are 600 grain thinsulate. They make them uh, in uninsulated 200 and 600 grain thinsulate boots. Now, they're padded at the collar, so they're very comfortable there. They have some good padding down inside. They're Gore-Tex. Okay, they have a Gore-Tex booty in them uh, so that they're completely waterproof. And for winter time, these are a great boot. And 